And good evening, everyone. Welcome to another exciting Saturday Night Wine Stream and another exciting edition of Drink with Rick. I'm Rick, and tonight we are going to try uh, a wine that I picked up just today, as a matter of fact, and have never tried it before. And we're, I'm going to tell you all about this, uh, at least everything I know about this wine, and um, we're going to try it out and see how it tastes. I, to be honest, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, a food to pair it with tonight. I have a few things. I'll explain that in a, in a few minutes. But uh, we'll, we'll have some fun with it anyway. I'm all, we're also going to toast birthdays, anniversaries, national days, and we'll just talk about stuff. And join me in the chat and talk with me. I want to know what you're drinking, what you'd like to see me drinking, and uh, just, just tell me how you're doing in general. Anyway, uh, you can watch this, of course. If you're joining for the first time, uh, you can watch us at uh, drinkwithrick.com. You can watch us on Facebook, on our Facebook page, Drink With Rick. Our YouTube channel, Drink With Rick. Uh, you can watch us on Twitter, at Drink With Rick. And uh, on Twitch, twitch.tv. Uh, you can watch us at Savoia Media. Just Savoia Media, all one word, S-A-V-O-I-A-M-E-D-I-A. -A -E we have chats open on uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. And you can tweet me on Twitter. We are also at drinkwithrick.com live for the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Now, you can't uh, chat with me directly there, but you can leave comments in the video below if you go to the page that the video is on. Uh, and I'll certainly respond to you uh, in, as soon as I get a chance to do so. Uh, the podcast, you can listen. If you're listening later, you can listen to the podcast. The podcast goes up at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday nights. Uh, at 10 p.m. every Monday night, and uh, you can listen to podcasts there. You can also email me at rick at savoyamedia.com. That's rick at s-a-v-o-i-a-m-e-d-i-a.com. If you have any suggestions for wines that you'd like uh, for me to try, wines that you like, uh, tell me about wines you don't like. That's okay, and we will rate the wines together. Uh, if you have uh, any suggestions, if you'd like to send me a wine, to drink. If you're a winery, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> send me a, a bottle of wine. I will certainly review it. I'll give it a fair, honest review. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to just give you a, a, an upfront positive review just because I got a free bottle of wine, but I'm going to give it a fair and honest review for everyone. If I like it, I'll, I'll let everyone know. If I don't, you know, I'll let everyone know. But uh, it's, it's a matter of personal taste, wine is, of course, uh, in, in many respects. Now, there are some wines that I think everyone knows the difference between a, a really good wine and a really bad wine, but in between that, it's kind of a, a personal uh, taste, uh, according to your personal palate, in between that. So there's a lot of room for uh, variance there. Now, if you're watching for the first time, I am not a sommelier. I am not a wine expert, per se. I do um, like wine. I am kind of an everyman who likes wine. I know what wines I like to drink. I know what tastes good to me and what doesn't taste good to me, what is good with my palate, and what uh, wines go with the foods that I like to eat. So um, I can make some recommendations. You don't have to follow all my recommendations, but uh, hopefully uh, my reviews will, will kind of help you, guide you a little bit in making sort of a personal decision on your own as whether or not you'd like to, to try that wine or not. Anyway, uh, let's check the chats first of all. And Phil has joined us in the chat. Phil, as always, it's it's great to see you. Uh, I I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm glad you're here. And please please join in the chat and tell me how you're doing on this Saturday night. Courtney is in the chat. Courtney, it's also great to see you. I'm happy that you're here, and I'm I'm happy that everyone's here that shows up. Let me check and see who's uh anybody on uh, YouTube. Uh, we have a watch or two on YouTube. Nothing going on. Twitch. Um, we've had a lot of activity on Twitch uh, and for a couple of wine streams, so I'm not going to forget Twitch tonight. I'm going to ch keep checking in the chat there. So if you're joining on Twitch, don't be afraid to give me a shout out, and, and um, I'll 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 shout out right back at you, <laughs> and and, uh, and 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 I'll engage you uh, there as well. We have uh, let's see, uh, yeah, okay, I guess we're we're good right now. My uh, my family and I took a day trip up to, to Boone and Blowing Rock uh, to, uh, last, yesterday, and we stayed overnight and came back today. So this is going to be kind of a short show. We're all a little bit wiped out here. In fact, my wife is already in bed, and she's kind of 
She says, I'm not waiting up for you. <laughs> so <laughs> she said, keep it a short show. I'm not waiting up for you tonight because I'm just, uh, you know, it's, it's, she's just too tired. And my kids, uh, they're, they're a little, little tired too. And we, we did a lot of walking around and it was kind of an exciting trip. But um, I am a little tired myself, so we're going to kind of keep it short. Anyway, we have uh, foods to pair this with. Um, I'm going to show you what I have. And uh, this is on, uh, it's very simple tonight. I have some turkey pepperoni. I have a few cheeses. I have uh, a medium cheddar cheese. And I have, uh, let's see, my creamy gouda, my favorite creamy gouda, and some crackers to clear the palate with. And uh, some smoked cheddar, and I think I have some uh, some hard parmesan, some hard parmesan, because this wine is supposed to go kind of good with a hard cheese. But we'll find out. We'll find out. And uh, Courtney says, "Hey Rick, long time no see." Well, it, yeah, it has been a little while. And I'm glad you're here tonight, Courtney. Uh, stick around, and uh, and uh, Courtney says, "Shout out to Chi." I will do that, and uh, uh, Courtney. And uh, you guys have to exchange recipes sometimes. I think. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, what, oh yes, then wine. We're going to do the wine now, and um, this is, let me tell you a little bit about this wine. This is a uh, Monte Ton Tondo, Monte Tondo, I think that's how it's pronounced, and uh, this is a Val Policello wine. Uh, it's a Val Policello Superior, San Pietro, and uh, this is a, a this is an Italian Val Policello, uh, it's uh, from, from Italy, and it's actually from a uh, from a winery that uh, I guess is is pretty fairly well known. I did a little research on this wine, and uh, pulling up their their own uh, product sheet on it, they uh, say that it is located directly between uh, Lago di Garda and Venezia. Monte Tondo is making some of the most exciting, vibrant wines in all of Veneto. This Valpolicella is a great example, somewhere between a Ripasso and a basic Valpolicella Classico. And uh, they say the grapes are dried for about a month in a well-ventilated uh, frutai, 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 before pressing, and ultimately aged for five months in oak. Not a frivolous wine. It packs loads of sour black cherry aromas and spices, violets, and roses. We're going to find out about that. By the way, they pronounce Valpolicella, apparently it's supposed to be pronounced Valpolicella. Valpolicella. And, um, you know, the thing is about, about that is I've always pronounced it Valpolicella. That, uh, but uh, apparently, according to them, it's Valpolicella. Who knew? I, apparently a lot of people, but me. <laughs> So, uh, and Tim's joined us in the chat. Tim, uh, Tim, I'm glad you're here. Uh, stick around and tell me how you're doing. Uh, let me get back to the wine here for just a moment. Uh, back to the Valpolicella. This, and I'll explain a little bit about this wine that, that uh, this was recommended to me by, um, by the uh, proprietor of uh, Sunset and Vine. Uh, his name is Bennett, Bennett Larson. And a uh, really nice guy, and he seems to know, he's very knowledgeable in his wines. And I was rather impressed with, uh, with his knowledge and uh, what he, apparently he, and uh, if you recall, let me go back to the back of this wine for just a second. No, let me come back here. There we go. If, if you recall, very early on in the wine stream, uh, I'd say about uh, three, four episodes in, maybe, maybe five, we... Um, no, no, it was, it was later than that. We reviewed a couple of wines that I picked up because it was in May. So it was probably about the 12th, 13th wine stream, something like that. I don't really remember. Um, I went to Sunset and Vine uh, up in Boone uh, or in Blowing Rock, North Carolina, and I picked up a couple of bottles of wine that were on uh, recommended to me, personal recommendations from Sharon Chrisman, who is um, the owner, one of the owners. And um, uh, the first one, was uh, one that I, I really didn't, we opened it up and we reviewed it and I didn't really care for too much. But the second one I really liked. I really liked. So, uh, and once again, I might just have been uh, just the bottle, that particular bottle of wine, or maybe it was just my palate that evening. I don't know on the first one, but the second one I, I thought was pretty good. Uh, so uh, when I went back and uh, I um, talked to, uh, Sharon wasn't there, but, but, uh, but Bennett was, and, and uh, we, we talked about the wines, and, 
and uh, he made a couple of recommendations, and this is one that he personally recommended. So we're going to try we're going to try that tonight. Anyway, uh, back to the wine for a minute. We're uh, this is the wine, and let me get a shot of the the back here. This is the back end. I'm going to read this. Uh, <clears throat> this is a 2017. Uh, produced and bottled by uh, by Montetondo SS in Suave, Italy. Suave? Italy? Uh, imported by August Wine Group, LLC, in Seattle, Washington. This is a product of Italy. And uh, there is 13% alcohol by volume in this 750 milliliter bottle. Now, I don't know if you can see it down below towards uh, the lower left, but it says hand-picked, uh, meaning that the... Um, Apparently the grapes were hand picked, not machine uh, uh, harvested, but but hand picked. Apparently, from what I understand, I uh, may be wrong about that. I did a little research on the wine, and I uh, I didn't find a whole lot about this particular wine online that was in English. There were there were a few sites on there that had this wine up there. It was all in Italian, but I will say that it uh, looking this up. And I didn't really find any real pricing on it, per se. I think I saw a $15 pricing on it somewhere. and uh, But I, I paid, I can tell you that I paid uh, the labels on the front here, $18.99 for this bottle. Uh, actually, I, 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 it might have been a little bit less than that. Uh, so I thought, I thought, yeah, you know, I'll give it a try. We'll see how, how it works out. Anyway... <clears throat> Uh, let's check the chat again. And uh, Tim says hi, Rick, and hi right back at you, Tim. And uh, you know, I um, uh, where was it going? Oh yes, I was going to open this bottle. So let's go ahead and open this bottle. I'm going to breathe a little bit. This is uh, a traditional cork. So I've got my foil cutter. We're going to open this up. And of course, I have my handy dandy mechanical corkscrew. Cork from uh, apparently Aldi in the UK, and we're going to open this up and see how this works. I have had one bottle bust on me with this thing once, and I think it was just the, the, the neck of the bottle was damaged. Uh, I haven't had an issue with it any, any time since. And of course, we're going to, we're going to aerate this in my, in my aerator, my... Uh, Veneto wine level wine lovers aerator from the Veneto wine lover set, which is available for $19.99 from Amazon, and I think that just the aerator itself is available for uh, I think about $12.99 something like that. But you can you can check you can check the website. I think I have uh, links to it, a banner to it up on on my website at drinkwithrick.com, and of course to um, well normally I would have my uh, <laughs> Ding! I would have my trusty uh, wine glass from the, uh, the uh, my genuine crystal wine glass from the Cooper's Hawk Wine and Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. But what I did tonight uh, was I brought up uh, a glass from Sunset and Vine. Now this is not a crystal glass, a regular glass, but it should be uh, it should be okay. Anyway, I wanted to try it because since I got the wine from Sunset and Vine, I thought I would match it with the glass. It's a nice, uh, it's a nicely etched. Uh, I didn't get a, a photo of it beforehand, but it's it is nicely uh, it is nicely etched on there, sunset and vine. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like a pretty pretty decent glass. So we're going to uh, pour it in this and try it in in the glass tonight. And we'll just give it a little pour. Looks like a nice nice glass. And I can smell, I can smell the aromas. I can smell the rose. Let's let that breathe for just a moment. And while we're doing that, uh, let me check the chat one more time. See who else is in the chat. And uh, yeah, Tim's in the chat. We've got uh, folks watching. Anybody on Twitch? Don't be afraid to speak up if you're if you're joining me on Twitch. I will I will uh, respond in kind. And of course on YouTube. Let's see. Back to the wine. Uh, just uh, to, to let you know that uh, it's uh, according to the spec sheet that I have here, the the one sheet, 
that it is supposed to go pretty well with uh, pork roast, ragu with rabbit, and balsamic over blue cheese. That, that's what they have on their sheet. I don't know because I don't really eat a lot of that, and uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I like blue cheese, but only if it's poured over a, a, a blue cheese dressing or poured over a salad or, or it's, if it's part of a uh, blue cheese dressing dip for, for my wings. Other than that, I usually don't eat blue cheese straight by itself. I'm just not crazy about it. But we'll try it with a few other cheeses. Now, what it does say, it does say that it uh, it was five months in the barrel, six months in the bottle, oak barrels, I believe. And the grapes, let's look at the grapes because this is a wine blend. This is a wine blend. This is 55% Corvina, 30% Rondinella, and 15% Molinera, which is generally that combination, the Corvina, uh, and the and the Rondinella and Molinera are generally what would come together to make uh, a lot of these Valpolicellas, Valpolicellas, I should say. Um, this one is, I guess, this is the variance on it. This is the uh, um, the the amount on, on the blend can vary somewhat uh, depending depending on how it's blended and, and who's blending it. But in this case, it's 55% Corvina, 30% Rondinella, 15% Molinera. So uh, that's good to know. We'll find out uh, how how this uh, how this tastes in just a moment. It says uh, cold maceration followed by soft pressing, fermentation in temperature controlled stainless steel. So it's uh, apparently it was uh, five months in three year old French, American, and Slavonian oak barrels, and then six months in the bottle. So. It should be should should be good. Should be interesting. We'll, we'll see how it, how it is. So, go ahead and, and give this one a, li, uh, a whiff. And um, it's not too. You know, when I first poured it out of the bottle, it I, I could smell the aromas coming out as pouring in. But in the glass, it's just some some soft. It, it's really some soft um, notes. I'd say. A cherry, a little cherry, but uh, I'd probably say a little bit of um, a little plum, maybe a little pomegranate. Hmm. This is what I smell anyway. So we'll see what it tastes like in just a moment. No, uh, it says, uh, yeah, well, we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, the cherry's stronger in this. Um, yeah, it has a little bit of, almost a little bit of cranberry in it, I think. I don't know if that was cranberry it tasted, or pomegranate. What is it? Probably pomegranate. Yeah, a little bit of, uh, a little tart. A little tartness. Um, like um, like a cranberry or something, it goes down fairly well. It's it's um, I want to say it's just a little bit chewy, not too bad. It's it's a little bit, and it's mild, mild tannins, mild tannins. It's not it's 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 dry, but it's it's not overly you know not a lot of tannins, and it's some, um, kind of mild tannins. Mm. Fruity, fruity, but but it's mildly so. It's not. It's it's sort of a medium. It's sort of a medium uh, fruit taste. It's kind of a medium bodied wine. I don't know if you can tell. You can't really tell from these lights. But it's sort of a medium bodied wine, and it is. Uh, it's it's kind of smooth and, and just mildly tannic. It's it's not really it's not really heavily tannic. And it's a little acidic. It's 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 somewhat acidic. I don't know. It might uh, might go well with a couple of these cheeses that I have. We'll we'll find out. Supposedly, it's supposed to go well with hard cheeses, and I only have one hard cheese here to taste it with. So uh, the rest of them are pretty medium or soft cheeses. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Of course, I have the Gouda here, and then of course I haven't lost out. I haven't. Mismatched a pairing with this Gouda so far. This is the Trader Joe's 
creamy Gouda. I haven't mismatched a pairing with that and with any of the wines I've tasted so far, even the ones that I didn't like as much. So it shouldn't be too bad. Courtney says, uh, next time you see Matt, ask him about Jonathan's blue cheese story. Well, uh, Courtney, I will do that if, if I can remember to do that. Okay. You know, last time I saw Matt, he was uh, he was at the store. He was at the wine store. I stopped in uh, a few weeks ago. It was just, uh, just before New Year's, I think. Or just, uh, no, it was uh, after the holiday. Just about New Year's, almost. And... Uh, well, I don't know, Courtney. Uh, maybe you should tell us about Jonathan's blue cheese story. It sounds pretty interesting. Is it a good? Is it a good story, or is it a? Should be interesting. <laughs> or maybe Jonathan should tell us about the blue cheese story. How is Jonathan doing, by the way? I haven't. Uh, I, I. He was in. Um, he was in uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think, and uh, uh, maybe if he shows up later, he can he can tell us about it as well. Courtney says, not really. <laughs> it's not really that interesting. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> I'll, uh, we can, uh, we can listen to it. That's fine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, let's see who is we got going on in, uh, Nothing. We've got people watching on on uh, YouTube. Not not a whole lot going on there, and uh, Twitch. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm not forgetting you folks on Twitch. I'm really I'm really watch, checking that. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to forget you. Uh, not like last time. <laughs> okay. Well, let's try pairing this wine with something and see how it, how it works out. Now we're going to try it. I'm going to try it with the uh, with the uh, turkey pepperoni. Now. It was it was talking about uh, uh, pork roast and things like that. I don't really eat that. It, I say kind of a mild mild meats. Uh, what it sounds like uh, this is kind of I don't think this is really spicy. We'll see. It's a little spicy, not too much. Mm. Kind of weird. When I oh, let me try that again. Uh, the, the reason is because I tasted something very, very different when I when I tasted the meat. Got a very different flavor from it this time. Mm. Gotta pick that out. You know what? I I. <laughs> It kind of like a, kind of a cranberry came out of that. Kind of strong. I don't know what that was all about, but it was weird. Um, didn't expect that. Really pronounced cranberry was kind of pronounced in that. Interesting. Courtney says uh, it would be much better told from Matt. Oh, uh, Courtney says he's been duck hunting. I, I think that we're talking about John. He's been duck hunting, just got back this evening, and is helping our son with a school project. Well, I hope that goes well. And that family time is very, very important. Um, Courtney says it would be much better told from Matt. <laughs> so he's Matt's the one who makes it interesting then, I guess. Well, Matt shows up. We'll have Matt tell us the story. I, I'm, you know, I'd like to have Matt on a stream sometime, maybe, maybe live sometime, come in here and just the two of us sit back and drink a little bit and just talk about stuff. That could be pretty interesting. We've, we've talked about that a little bit, and uh, one of these days I think we're going to do that later on once we get uh, a lot of the, the other stuff situated here in the studio out of the way, and we can we can set up to do that. Um, Courtney says, always. Matt tells a good story. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's try this a little bit with the cheese. I'm not, I don't know if I'm expecting too much from this cheddar. It's sort of a medium... And it's not a bad cheddar. It really isn't. Not a bad cheddar. Mm. I don't think this Valpolicella is really really a cheddar kind of wine. Let's try it. I tell you what, let's try it with the... Because this, this Italian wine, let's go ahead and try it because it's supposed to go good with some, with some of these cheeses. I tell you, let's try it with Gouda first. Nothing has, nothing has mismatched with the cheddar so far, right? Oh, excuse me. 
That was not the that was not the gooder. Gouda. That was that was the smoke cheddar. Grab the wrong cheese. Actually, it's not too bad with the smoked cheddar. The smoked cheddar, and it's a harder cheese, so it's not it's it's not bad with the smoked cheddar. Where is my uh, oh here's my gouda. It's over here. I know I'm not using the the little fork tonight. Mm. The gouda is good as always. Still a hit. I don't think um, I don't think it's bad with the gouda. Uh, I, it might work better with the parmesan. Oh, um, the hard palm, the parm, hard parm. It might go go better with this. So we'll get that. Reload the glass. This is a hard parmesan. This is good. Great for grating, by the way. Mm. Yeah, you know I think this would go really well with a uh, a pasta, with a lot of Parmesan cheese on it. Par a pasta loaded with Parmesan, I think that we would go very well with. So I think we'll we'll say that that's that's a winner right there. I think that's that's a good one. I I like the wine. It's it's actually uh, it's actually pretty easy to drink. And once again, see, I like tannic wines too, but sometimes it's a nice switch to go with something that's mildly tannic. Or if you special, if you're going to pair it with something else that's kind of a uh, a mild meat, not not a spicy meat, or not something really heavy on the barbecue. Now, we did the reason why I'm not doing this heavy tonight. I'm, I'm going light on the foods is because we did have dinner at uh, a local barbecue place, and and we've done it before, uh, the Midwood. I've talked about Midwood Barbecue up the street here from us, and um, Midwood makes a great, oh, they just make this great smoked um, barbecue beef rib, and this beef rib is literally a foot long, and it's just falling off the bone tender, and I think they just smoke this thing for, for days, and they only make so many of them, so they only have it available on the weekends, so you have to get there pretty early on the weekends. To, to get these beef ribs, and they're very popular, so they go pretty quick. Great beef ribs, but Tommy and I split one, and there's just a, there's a lot of meat on this thing. I mean, and in particular, the one they gave us, there was just it was just a huge hunk of meat on on the bone, and um, uh, so Tommy and I split that, and uh, it was it was a full meal. I tell you, it was a lot uh, for two people, and, uh, I don't have, to, uh, Tommy can pack it away, because he's a growing, he's, he's a growing young man, but me, I was just, uh, well, it was a bit much, and, um, but it was really, really good, but I was saving the wine for now, for the stream, so I didn't drink any wine with it, and, um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm still kind of full from that, so I didn't want to overdo it with, uh, the food pairing tonight, because I just, I, I'm just kind of stuffed, plus, the last couple of days, we've been eating out a lot so much and uh just a lot uh, uh I, I i'm just trying i'm trying to lose a little bit of weight and uh i don't think the last two days did anything to help it so uh we, <laughs> so that's why i'm going easy here and we're gonna go easy with the show tonight too because i don't know how how long i can go before i give out now i'll talk a little bit more about our trip in a, in a few minutes it was very interesting so I think overall with the food, I, I think this is a 2017. I think this is uh, is aged for very well in the bottle, and it's uh, it's actually pretty nice, and easy to drink. Has a pretty nice color to it. Um, it's a it's a it's a ruby red color, but it's a little bit. Um, it looks like it's it's aged a little is what it looks like, and, and I don't know I don't know that you can really tell in this lights, but it does have a sort of an aged look to this wine. And but it's good, it's good. I like it, and especially in the sunset and vine glass, I, I think it, I think it works works pretty well. Okay, and um, I want to thank Bennett Bennett Larson for uh, for recommending this. I I think it was a good recommendation. I think that was very very good. I I do want to um, give him a shout out here, and, and we'll do that in a couple of minutes when I get into the trip. 
But uh, first of all, let's go ahead and ta uh, to taste, toast the birthdays. It's time to toast the birthdays and the anniversaries. And I do have a few birthdays and an anniversary to toast, as a matter of fact. Uh, first of all, I want to toast. I'm going to toast my friend Rob Greenley, my good friend Rob uh, from Libsyn and a uh, longtime fellow podcaster and a uh, really nice guy. And uh, Rob, uh, I, I know your birthday was January 30th, and I did toast you uh, on last week's stream, but I'm going to toast you again. Happy birthday to Rob. Happy birthday to you. I also want to uh, toast another uh, friend of mine from a long, long time ago, who I'm friends with uh, on Facebook. And, um, you know, I, I almost lost touch with some of my WFL friends and family from WFL uh, from years back. But Facebook, that's one of the good things about Facebook is it's enabled us all to kind of get back together and, and find each other uh, after all these years and reconnect. And they're just, great, they're just great, great people anyway. And I never want to lose touch with them. Um, but uh, Ellen, uh, I want to say uh, to, to Ellen Williams, uh, happy birthday. Her birthday is actually tomorrow. And Phil, you know Ellen. You know Ellen. Uh, we all go pretty far back. Ellen worked at WFL along with us. And uh, she worked in accounting, I believe. And, uh, and here's to you, Ellen. Happy birthday. And may you have many, many more. And I hope your birthday goes very, very well tomorrow. Do, do something. Relax. Go out, have some fun. Have some wine. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. It's your birthday. I hope you have a great birthday, Ellen. I really do. And um, my, uh, I, I also want to give a, a, a I want to give a birthday greeting to uh, my brother Mike, whose birthday was yes, uh, was today, today. Excuse me, today's the first, February first, February first. And the reason I, one of the reasons I remember my brother's birthday is because he and I were born in the same month, in February. And uh, my brother Mike, uh, he was born February first. He's my younger brother. He's one of my younger brothers. I'm, I'm the eldest in the family, uh, the eldest child, that is. <laughs> and uh, Michael, he lives in uh, he lives in Japan now. He's lived there for for many many years, uh, and uh, he lives there with his wife. And uh, I I think that it's been a while since I've seen him. I, I Skype with him. I talk with him on Skype occasionally, every once in a while. But uh, being on the other side of the world like that, it's it's uh, a little bit tough to 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 talk with each other much. It, 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 the timing is a little off because usually when he's awake, I'm asleep. When he's asleep, I'm awake. Uh, something like that. Anyway, uh, so um, my brother Michael, here's to you in case you're watching now or later. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. And I hope your birthday has been, was, was uh, well, first, I don't know. Japan, I think that's over with now. But I hope your birthday was a, a great one. Happy birthday to you. And um, my uh, my friend Ed, my friend Ed Strickland. Ed, his birthday is uh, February 3rd. That would be, uh, was it, one, today's, uh, uh, today's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Well, it would be Monday, right? February 3rd. Here's you, Ed. Ed Murray Strickland. And uh, that brings me to an anniversary, too. And uh, Ed, I know, and they've been in the chat. Some, they, they watch the wine stream occasionally, and uh, they've been in the chat from time to time. I know I've seen them in there. And I want to say a big happy birthday to my good friend Ed. We go way, way back, many, many years. And uh, Ed and Mary, and Ed, happy birthday. Happy birthday. We're going to do the anniversary in just a moment. Courtney says, uh, big toast goes out to my friend Richie. Her birthday is Tuesday. Well, Richie. Okay, well, let's toast Richie. Courtney, what do you have? What are you drinking tonight? You drinking? Uh, and tell, me, tell me what you're drinking. Let's let's toast her together. I want to say a uh, big toast to, to uh, Courtney's friend Richie. Her birthday is Tuesday. Happy birthday to Richie. Happy birthday. Um, we have an anniversary, too. Uh, the anniversary also is related to Ed and Mary Strickland, but this is for Mary. 
because she is celebrating her retirement. Uh, Mary is uh, retiring. She retired, actually, as of Friday, this past Friday on the 31st. So uh, Mary is officially retired and on to bigger and better adventures and endeavors and, and uh, whatever, whatever uh, else she decides to do with her life. But uh, her retirement, that's a milestone. That's, that's a great achievement, a great milestone to put in uh, so much uh, time uh, in a career and then, and then retiring. And uh, I want to say congratulations on your retirement, Mary. Congratulations. And may you enjoy it immensely. I know, uh, I know, I, I know. Ed was happy um, uh, to to announce that as well. So, I, you know, I, I I'm I'm very happy for both of you. I really am. And Courtney says I'm actually drinking a beer. I won't say which one because it's embarrassing. <laughs> Come on. All right, Courtney. What what beer? No, you can say you can. There, look, we have no. Look at me. I'm doing this live, and I'm making. Uh, you know, I have no shame. I have no shame. It's okay. We're all friends here. Don't worry about it. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh, so if, if you don't want to say, it's okay. But uh, but if you want to say, it's is it is it a uh, Budweiser, a Miller Lite, uh, a Bush? Do they make Bush anymore? Oh, the Champagne of Beers. Okay. <laughs> we know which one that is. You know, I'm, I'm going to talk about the... the, the um, Big game in a, here in a few minutes, but uh, uh, how many have you had, Courtney? Just one. You know, I saw a. Uh, it is, this is funny. I, I saw a uh, shirt, a T-shirt, while we were walking around uh, downtown Blowing Rock, and they had a, sh a T-shirt out they were selling, and uh, it says in 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 dog beers I've only had one. In dog beers, I've only had one. <laughs> I thought that was cute. I, I almost bought it. But then uh, Tommy and I, when we were waiting for our table over at Midwood, I walked across the street to the uh, to the uh, pet store across the street and uh, in the same plaza. But uh, I walked in, and lo and behold, they had the same shirt there for sale. And I thought, well, I wonder what that's karma. Maybe I should buy it now. I didn't. I didn't. I probably should have because I didn't have it here. But uh, I thought it was a funny shirt. <laughs> in dog beers i've only had one uh, courtney says uh, it was cold and in the fridge honestly i'm not sure where it came from just one come on courtney no one can drink just one okay wait a minute that's uh that's another product right i'm not doing product endorsements i'm not doing it. <laughs> and i like potato chips no one can eat just one uh, <laughs> sorry courtney all right, well, um, I'm making a mess of myself today. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, you know, I saw another, uh, there was another shirt. The, the reason that Tommy and I went into the dog store is because originally, uh, a few years ago, when we walked in there, they had a shirt that, call, that, that said, um, uh, what did it say? It was, um, uh, my dog doesn't know sit. That's I think that's what the shirt said was my dog doesn't know sit, and uh, I thought that was really clever, but they didn't have it in my size. I mean, I'm an XL, and they only had like a medium or small, and and, and they they said, well, you know, I might get one in. So I I've been in there several times since to see what they would ever have an XL in there for that shirt because I thought it was very clever, but um, they never got one in, and then they have since discontinued the shirt. And I said, well, why did you discontinue the shirt? She says, I have no idea. It was very popular. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, if I was selling T-shirts and it was a very popular shirt like that, I don't think I'd want to discontinue that unless it was a specific reason to do so, unless maybe there was some trademark or copyright violation with something else. I don't, I don't who knows? I have no idea. But um, then we'll get to that in a minute, too, because I have a little rant about that tonight, uh, <laughs> if we ever get around to it. Uh, well, let's, time to, let's host some national days because there's some fun national days in here. Courtney, enjoy your beer. The champagne of beer. <laughs> there's the king of beers and there's the champagne of beers. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Now, we're going by the national day calendar. And, of course, uh, Marlo Anderson, uh, my friend Marlo Anderson, who is the owner of the nationaldaycalendar.com, 
Um, he has uh, put some national days up here that I think are worth uh, talking about. Let me pull these back up here. I want to lose my national, my national day calendar. Uh, it's somewhere. I lost my page. Here we go. There it is. All right, February, February 1st, which was today, which is today for another hour and 15 minutes. National Baked Alaska Day. You know, I don't think I've ever had Baked Alaska, so I don't know if I can toast it or not. If any, if you, has anyone had Baked Alaska before? I don't know. I, if anyone's had, I don't know. I've never had Baked Alaska. I've heard about it a lot. It sounds like it'd be fun to, to try. I've just never had it myself. One of these days, I might might uh, try one. If, if it's available in a restaurant, I go in and they've got Baked Alaska. It seems like none of the restaurants I ever go to have Baked Alaska. I don't know. Uh, National Freedom Day, Freedom from Slavery. You know, I will definitely drink to that because, you know, that's a very, very important day. Um, and that comes from the Emancipation Cl Proclamation. And, you know, when, when uh, Abraham Lincoln signed uh, or, or actually uh, pushed through that, uh, which later on became the 13th Amendment, but um, the National Freedom Day is pretty much observed on February 1st, and it celebrates freedom from slavery and it uh it is i guess it was the day that abraham lincoln actually signed the resolution it was a joint resolution between the house and the senate that later became the 13th amendment and uh when he signed the amendment this was outlawing slavery on february 1st 1865 um that that pretty much ended slavery now it wasn't ratified by the the states until um, and until December of that year, and I think according to what I have here is December 18th, but uh, it, it took, and of course it took a while for everything to, to, to take hold, and, and uh, uh, but, but the, the fact that uh, Abraham Lincoln signed it, and um, you know, it was uh, basically signing it into law that you know, that pretty much all men are created equal. Everyone has the right, the same freedoms, the, the same individual freedoms as everyone else in this country. And um, National Freedom Day is uh, the, the day that signifies that. And I will definitely drink to that because everyone, every person should be, should be uh, free with equal protection under the law, right? I will drink to that. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, National Get Up Day. I don't know what that's about, but I did get up today. And I'm glad I did get up today because I had to drive home <laughs> from where we were. But I'm glad I did get up anyway because I tell you what, any morning that that, that, that you can get up... Um, <laughs> And that's why, especially at my age, you know, any morning that you can wake up uh, and greet the day is a good morning. <laughs> it really is. National Get Up Day. National Serpent Day. I'm not even going there. I'm not even going there. I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders and snakes. Um, especially spiders and snakes. National Texas Day. I'll drink to that. Texas, the Lone Star State. Home of the Dallas Cowboys, who are not in the big game this year. Notice I said the big game. I'll get to that in a few minutes. To, uh, let's see. Today is ice cream for breakfast day. For <laughs> oh, boy. I'll tell you why I'm laughing. <laughs> ice cream for breakfast day. I will drink to that. Okay, we didn't know it was ice cream for breakfast day this morning. And let me tell you what we had this morning. Now, okay, we, we, had a, we did have a breakfast in the, in the hotel, free breakfast. But right after that, right after that free breakfast, we went uh, walking to downtown Bowling Rock, and we, Tommy and I made a point to have some ice cream in the morning. So it was almost breakfast. It was still almost breakfast. Actually, it was closer to lunch. It really was ice cream for lunch day. But but we were trying to make it there for breakfast. So here's to next. And it was good ice cream too, by the way. Although we, we were feeling it later. Here's to national ice cream. Here's to ice cream for breakfast day. 
There you go. That's good enough. So we pretty much uh, observed more or less ice, uh, ice cream for breakfast day without realizing that's what we were doing. We were celebrating ice cream for breakfast day. What a coincidence. February 2nd is National Heavenly Hash Day. National Tater Tot Day. I like tater tots. You like tater tots? I like tater tots. Um, they're, they're okay. I like tater tots. They're fun. And um, Courtney says, uh, too bad I missed the ice cream for breakfast. We'll have to celebrate tomorrow. You can do that. You can. You know what, Courtney? I say do that. Celebrate ice, ice cream for breakfast day. Celebrate it on, on the 2nd. Because, you know, um, I don't think there are really any hard rules about that. Right? It's just like National Donut Day. I don't think there are any hard rules for that. Uh, they're, they're the days, but uh, it doesn't have to be. Every day is, it's just like, uh, it's, it's just it's just like uh, happy hour, right? It's it's 5 o'clock. It's, it's always happy hour somewhere, right, Courtney? <laughs> so there you go. Um, let's see, what else we have going on National Days? It is, uh, tomorrow is... National Tater Tot Day, we got that, and National Groundhog Day. Of course, we cannot forget that it is National Groundhog Day. Now, here's the question. What do you think? What are the odds that Puxitani Phil will see his shadow or not? Right? I think it's if he sees his shadow, you get six more weeks of winter, and if he doesn't, it's an early spring, or is it the other way around? I don't remember. All I remember is that um, Bill Murray had to relive that day over and over and over again until he got it right. Here's to National uh, Tater Tot Day, National Groundhog Day. I don't know much about Heavenly Hats, to be honest with you. You can do that one if you want. February 3rd is National Carrot Cake Day. I like carrot cake. You like carrot cake? I like carrot cake. Uh, National Carrot Cake Day and National Day the Music Died Day. I think we all know what that's, that's all about, okay? I believe they were referring to uh, uh, the song by Don McLean, uh, American Pie. Not to be confused with the movies. American Pie, which I didn't see, by the way. But uh, the music, the day the music died, I think they're referring to what the mu what the song is alluding to, which is the, the, the terrible tragedy um, that, that happened. Let me pull it up for just a moment. If I'm at the risk of messing up my, uh, according to National Day, yep, that's right. It's, it's the actual day, February 3rd, the unfortunate and timely death of singers Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. Richardson are, you know, also known as the Big Bopper. And they all died in an airplane accident on February 3rd, 1959, which was just a few days, that was just about a week or so before my birthday, they passed away. And, um, and their pilot, Roger Peterson, also perished in a crash. Uh, this is coming from the National Day Calendar, by the way. I'm quoting them. But, um, but yes, I, I, I can't say I remembered that day because I, I wasn't born yet. But I do know the story. I know how that went. And, um, and of course, that was... Uh, I, I like Buddy, Buddy Holly. Uh, you know... Um, I mean, I didn't know him personally, but I liked his music. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Richie Valens was an up, I mean, he was an up-and-coming star. He was just an up-and-coming star. Um, and, and uh, I mean, he had a few uh, big hits, and it was just, he was just starting off. And, and I think that was really, Buddy Holly was, uh, uh, it was tragic, losing Buddy Holly, and the, the big bopper, of course. But but Richie Valens, I mean, he really didn't have a chance to enjoy his, I, I think, in my opinion, I, I, he was he was just way way too young for him. He was an I think he was an incredible talent, and um, uh, it just it was just way way too early in his career uh, to when when we lost uh, uh, Richie Valens. I, I think anyway, um, <clears throat> but anyway, here's to to um, the day the music died day. I will drink to that. February 3rd is also uh, National Football Hangover Day, the day after the big game. Now, they say here the day after the big game, and, and, and we're going to get into that in just a second. I, I got, what, 10, 15 minutes left to, to, to rant? <laughs> we'll do that. Uh, day, and that's uh, National Football Hangover Day. <clears throat> 
Uh, Cordy, save some of your beer for for I, I, that's probably there to for the uh, big game, right? Is that what it's there for? Uh, <laughs> uh, don't drink up all the beer if that's uh, what it's there for. National Missing Persons Day. I don't want to get into a long thing about that because we're running out of time, and I told my wife that we would end early tonight. But I want to say here's definitely to National Missing Persons Day. And uh, National Physicians Day. You know, I have no problem with with uh, with the women physicians. National Women Physicians Day. I'll drink to that. Our um, our uh, primary physician is um, is female. I don't have a problem with that. I think that there there's some great female physicians out there. Just as there are some great male physicians. Just as there are some very not very good physicians of, of, of all types out there, you know, uh, the, the people, they're all people. Um, <clears throat> National Football Hangover Day, <laughs> oh, I will drink to that. And if I keep drinking, I'm going to have one before the big game. <laughs> so um, I think that does it for the National Days uh, this week. I think let's, uh, we'll just cap it for that right now. And Rob is joining us in the chat. Rob, it's great to see you, and uh, I, I'm glad you're here. Stick around and tell me how you're doing. You're going to watch the game tomorrow, the big game. Everybody going to watch the big game? Uh, I think uh, I think a lot of us are. Uh, I, I have no doubt that a lot of us are going to do it to, 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 um, to join. Um and uh, I wanted to. Uh, Jonathan's in the chat on Twitch. Uh, he wants to know who I am. I have a bio there somewhere. You can check the bio out. I'm not going to spend ten minutes going over the bio right now. But um, let's see. Uh, we toast the national days. I think we can put a cap on that. Uh, oh yes, the the. Um, the trip to Boone. I want to talk about the trip to, to Blowing Rock and Boone. Now we went uh, Friday we morning. We she and I both took the day off from work and we drove up to Boone, North Carolina, particularly to take Tommy to um, Appalachian University. Uh, Appalachian University and, and uh, up there is a really fine fine uh, college. And uh, Tommy had put in um, an application to go and he was accepted. Tommy, and I will drink to that also. Here's my son Tommy being accepted at Appalachian University. And uh, we were all quite excited about that. So we went up there to uh, go over some things, you know, uh, kind of uh, check some things out and sort of uh, an orientation, uh, you know, take care of some other uh, business we had to do over there. And so uh, we went up there, and it, uh, I think we accomplished pretty much everything we went up to, accomp uh, to, to do. I think Tommy was very, uh, I, I think he was satisfied with, with uh, the agenda on the trip and, and ticking off everything we had to take care of, most, most of it anyway. Uh, Courtney says, congratulations to Tommy. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate that. Tommy's a fine young man, and uh, I know he's going to do well in that school. I, I know he is. He's going to do well wherever he goes. Anyway, so we, we went up there, and uh, we stayed overnight. In uh, Bo Boone and Blowing Rock, and uh, now his his uh, friend, our friend uh, Alex, his friend Alex Olinger, and uh, Betsy uh, Betsy Olinger is in the. I, I might still, she might still be in the chat. She started out. She was. Uh, I think she was watching the very beginning, Betsy. But if you're there, here's to you and to Alex. I want to give a shout out to Alex, by the way. Toast Alex because he gave us. He took uh, time out of his busy schedule, out of his day. To tour, uh, to give us a personal tour of some of the dorms, particularly his dorm, and uh, yeah, to, to tour the dorms so Tommy can get an idea on the uh, the dorm situation and, and what to expect and and looking at housing because the housing thing the thing is about uh, Appalachian uh, the the uh, population of Boone is pretty much half 50 50 half of its students and uh, which is not too surprising for most college towns per se but this is a very small town so it, it, it means a lot and so it's very very centric towards the university and the students 
and uh, because of that, the the housing is very very tight there for that. You know, the dorms and the, they're building more dorms, but the the dorm situation is pretty tight. And uh, there are uh, the housing outside or off campus housing is very very tough to come by. It's very very difficult. So. Um, so that was one of the things we went up there was to see what we could do to make sure that, that we could um, uh, manage, you know, make sure that there was some housing available for Tommy when, when the time comes for him to go in, in, in August, I think is when his, his classes start up there. So, uh, so we went, were up there for that trip, and of course we got the tour of uh, the dorms, and, and Alex hung out with us for a while. Uh, we, we hung out and we walked around uh, Blowing Rock as well. And we had a great time. Alex is a great young man. He's really a great young man. Good head on his shoulders, and um, I, I think he's going to do very, very well. I think he's well. I bet you. I think you've you've raised a very fine young man, in Alex. And of course, now Tommy and I. Uh, now we've known Alex since he was 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 young. Was he, when he was little. Um, he and Tommy went to school together. Went to grade school together. We've known. We've, well, you know, they're, they're old friends of the family, and, and uh, Tommy and Alex go, go way, way back to, to grade school, so they've uh, known each other for a long time. Um, so uh, he's always been, you know, uh, so, you know, he, he's, he's just always been a great kid. Anyway, um, so we had some fun up there uh, yesterday, and we stayed overnight. And then we, um, the next morning, we got up, had a little breakfast, and t uh, walked around Blowing Rock some more. And that's when I went to Sunset and Vine. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Sunset and Vine, because we've been there a couple of times. And um, as I mentioned before, Sharon Chrisman, uh, she's the proprietor there. And Bennett, Bennett Larson, uh, she, the, the two of them... Um, are, are the the proprietors of the of the store and they uh it's a it's a nice little place it's really it's very uh friendly very warm it's it's uh they have a lot of wine tastings there they do wine and cheese it's a really really cool little place i should have taken some pictures i should have taken some pictures put up but i did not do that i'm sorry um i do I do have a picture. I do have a picture of this. Oh, that's the hamburger. <laughs> uh, I do have a picture. I have a picture in there somewhere <laughs> of the wine, but not the shop. Uh, I should have taken pictures of the shop. It's a really cool place. It really neat. They did a really fine job with the with the wine store, and they um, they have wine tastings going on and they have a lot of events a boone and blowing rock the blowing rock area uh, has quite a, a wine um a community i should say there are about three wineries there are three wineries up there in that area in that general region so there's a lot of wine going on up there a lot of wine flowing and uh, they do a lot of events various events throughout the year but uh, when we went up there this, this morning, and I had a really nice conversation with with uh, with Bennett, and uh, a really nice guy, by the way, and uh, he uh, he suggested this wine. I've got a couple other wines here that we're going to open up and try uh, later on, um, you know, in the future. But um, we uh, we walked around, and we had had what happened was we had had breakfast and checked out of the hotel. And we had one of those uh, breakfasts that you know, breakfast is included in the in the deal. And uh, we were still kind of hungry, walking around, and and uh, saw the ice cream place. So we stopped in the ice cream place and said, "Let's have some ice cream." And my wife's looking at us like we're like we're from Mars again, <laughs> as she often does, and says, "You know what? It's 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 just after breakfast. It's gonna be lunchtime soon. You're gonna have ice cream this early." Um, and Tommy and I looked at each other and said, "Yeah." <laughs> What's wrong with that? So we walked in, we had ice cream, <laughs> and then uh, we, you know, walked around some more, and and then uh, started to head back. We, um, I don't know where I was going that, but once again, this is a stream of consciousness show, right? That's what I do. Anyway, we had a great time there. We had we had a lot of fun, and I, I'm really glad I did stop in there today because, and I want to give a shout out, and that was one that I wanted to say. I want to give a shout out to Bennett. I, I, I think you made a really, really good uh, recommendation on a wine. I want to say thank you very much for it. Give a shout out to you. And that's for Bennett. And also to Sharon. Um, you guys uh, have a, a, a nice little shop going there. And um, 
That's it. Blowing, you, know, you can catch them at blowingrockwine.com. That's the name of their website. It's blowingrockwine.com. And this is where I got the, uh, the, the, the glass. The, the glass is really nice. I picked up a couple. Actually, what happened was I picked up the wines. That's what happened. I, we went, uh, we, we got in, and they weren't quite yet open. And we got there just about 11 o'clock, and they opened at 11. So I was hanging around for a moment or two, and I saw the wine glass from the night before, because apparently it had something going on the night before. And in the uh, the little potted plant there, I guess it was, it was I actually I think it was for cigarette butts. But it had a it had one of these glasses with uh, with some wine in it just sitting in there, left over from the night before. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, and I looked at the glass. I thought, you know, I kind of like that glass. I wouldn't mind picking up one of those glasses. I kind of like that. So right away you opened the, st- the, the store and, and I walked in and we were talking about wine and I got so sidetracked with that, picking up the wine, that I completely forgot about the wine glass. So we picked up the wine, we're wandering around blowing rock for a couple hours, go back to the car, and then I really, I, I remembered, oh wait a minute, I forgot the wine glass. I have to go back for the, for the wine glass. So that's what I did. We just stopped and went back in there, grabbed a couple of glasses and... Uh, uh, and uh, and then uh, left, but that's how I got these, and uh, they're really nice, really nice. So um, I'm gonna hold on to these for a while. These are pretty cool glasses, and uh, I like the stems, nice stems, uh, glasses. Anyway, so that was that's what we did for a weekend. Now the thing is that I didn't like about this trip. That was the only thing about the trip that was a negative. Well, I can't say I didn't like it, but it was it was not fun. It was the drive up there. Now, the night before, I was watching the weather reports. And uh, who was it? The, the weatherman on our local channel. I'm not going to give his name. <laughs> Don't embarrass him. But the weatherman on, the, on our local channel, uh, one of our local news channels. It was Channel 9, actually. <laughs> uh, he he was talking. I wanted to make sure that we weren't going to be driving up in some snow and weather or something like that, and because uh, I didn't want to have to deal with the uh, snow and ice. And it's been pretty cold here, and it's been rainy, and and I know that it had some ice and snow up there, uh, up in the in the high country. So I was watching the weather report uh, very carefully uh, the night before at eleven o'clock. Uh, 11 o'clock news, that, well, he was saying, well, there's going to be some rain coming through on Friday, and it's just going to be some rain, and it's just going to, and it's just going to come through, and it's just going to blow through and be out of there, and then it's going to be kind of dry, but we're going to get the rain mostly around the Charlotte area, we're not going to see a lot of rain up in the high country, the high country meaning up in the mountains where we were going, and uh, it says up in the Boone area and everything, it's going to be fairly, you know, I'm not going to get a whole lot of rain or anything like that, and it's just going to kind of dry out and be done. That was not what happened, (laughs) okay? Uh, We're packing the car. This is Friday morning. We're packing the car up, and I feel a couple of little sprinkles, and I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. Okay, yeah, yeah." they said it was going to rain like Friday afternoon in Charlotte, and I was expecting, but I kind of figured by the time we got out of town, we'd we'd be out of that area. But no, that's not what happened. What happened was I go out to the car, I finish packing up the car, and we're about to get in it, and all of a sudden I hear this hard... These, these hard little ticks hitting the car. And you know that kind of hard tick. It's the sound of sleet, right? The sound of sleet. And I'm looking at my, and, and I'm feeling this in my hands. I'm like, it's sleet. Why is there sleet here? It's supposed to be some rain. It's sleet. So I walk, walk back in the house and then grab a couple of things. Kids get in the car. Wife gets in the car. I come out to the car. I lock the door and I turn around to go out to the car and it's snowing. It's snowing. There is snow, huge snowflakes coming down on our car in South Charlotte, in in our driveway. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, that's exact opposite of what I thought of what we were told was going to happen, right? So I thought, well, this can't be good. So we went ahead. You know, we're already committed. We get we get in the car. We drive off. We're going down the road. And, uh, and of course, so we, we get up to, uh, we get in the middle of Charlotte, starting to get out of town, and it's we're just pouring rain. It's just really miserable weather. You know, the traffic's horrible, and it's just, uh, we're just driving through this rain. And then by the time we get out of Charlotte, by the time we get, uh, I don't know, we were, we were about a third of the way there up to, to Boone. 
And all of a sudden, the rain just suddenly stopped and just changed to these huge snowflakes. And the rest of the trip was snow. It was just all snow going up there. And uh, we got up there. And, and by the time we got now, by the time we got there, the snow had stopped. By the time we got up to Blowing Rock, um, it had stopped. But all the trip up there, it was just snow just hitting the car all over the place and accumulating on the car and all around. And I thought, well, this isn't fun. Because <laughs> if you ever try to drive in, in snow and the, the visibility is terrible and it's just it's not, it's not fun. But anyway, so I'm thinking to myself, what happened with these weather guys, right? So I, we get there, we, we're, we're uh, out and about and around Boone, and then we go to our hotel room that evening. And that evening, uh, well, the next morning, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, watching the, the weather report because I'm thinking, well, you know what? I want to make sure that we're driving home in some decent weather. I want to know what the weather is going to be before I, we drive home. And they're predicting it's going to be some more rain and then it's going to clear up and be fine. We didn't see a drop of rain going on. <laughs> Coming back, we did not see a drop of rain. It was really nice. It was really nice coming back. And I thought to myself, but the funny thing is, I'm watching the, the same weather, the same station, and the weather report the next morning on the same station, and the same weatherman, and he's giving another weather report. And he says, well, yeah, we had some snow and all that kind of stuff. It was almost as if the previous prediction had never occurred. You know, it, it's. I thought to myself, this is really bizarre how when the weathermen get it right, they cannot stop. Uh, they cannot stop bragging about it when they get it right. But when they get it wrong, you never hear anything about it. It's almost as if it never had. It's almost as if their previous report never happened. He never, ever, ever mentioned, oh, we were surprised to get some snow. Or we were like, this was a shock to everybody uh, because that's not what we predicted. No, no, no. It never happened. The previous weather report never happened. Right? I guess maybe that's your job's in line. Because, I mean, if they admitted that they were wrong, then they wouldn't be doing a very good job about it, right? I mean, come on. Everybody can't be perfect at their job, right? Um, even the weatherman. I mean, I'm not perfect in my job. I do the best I can, but you know, nobody's perfect 100% of the time. I don't expect the weatherman to be accurate 100% of the time. But good grief, if you're going to be <laughs> at least admit it, you know. But it was uh, never. It's just. It, it's like it never happened. It's like like the the previous weather report never happened. It's like it was always going to be snow. <laughs> That's the way it came across to me, anyway. So I just thought that was kind of amusing. I, I, I thought that was really amusing. Anyway, so that was our trip to Boone. But I was going to talk about the big game because, you know, tomorrow is Groundhog Day, but it's also the big game, right? So I'm looking everywhere, and everybody's talking about the big game. The big game. The big game, right? Okay, let's talk about the big game. Okay, uh, everybody going to watch the big game tomorrow? I, I, I think a lot of us are, right? The thing is about the... the um, and uh, Scruff TV has joined us. And I want to say, Scruff uh, uh, TV is great, great to see you. Thanks for joining us in there. And He's on Twitch. And he says, Sup, Rick, what you drinking? And uh, once again, uh, to catch you up, once again, it's this is a uh, Montetondo uh, Valpolicella. This is a Valpolicella uh, Val Superior. And this is from Italy, and I picked this up at, uh, this is why we were talking about Boone and Blowing Rock, is because I picked this up at uh, Sunset and Vine and Blowing Rock on a day trip, up, or it was an overnight trip, I should say, up there uh, this weekend. We just got back today, a few hours before the stream started. And um, it's actually a very, very good wine. It is 55%, uh, what did I say it was? Uh, it's, a, it's a mix. It's, it's a combination. It, it's a blend, uh, as, as Val, Val Policellos are. It's a blend of Corvina uh, and, and Rondinella and uh, Molinera. And I think it's, uh, let me check and see what the, um, okay, 55% Corvina, 30% Rondinella, 13% Molinera, 13% alcohol by volume, by the way. Which uh, we know that's probably a little higher than that. I'm just my guess. And arrow is 77, uh, 737, 
says cheers and it's great to see you in the chat thanks for joining us in the chat arrow 37 uh, 737 i have not had too much of this yet well maybe i have let's have some more um cheers and here's cheers to you right back at you this is actually a very decent wine by the way i think it goes it'll pair i think this will pair pretty well with a pasta with a lot of um, hard parmesan cheese on it hard cheeses it'll go pretty well with I can't say that it, uh, I liked it with, it, the, it went fairly well with the Gouda, which is actually soft cheese, uh, which is not too bad. I can't say it worked very well with the uh, with the uh, turkey pepperoni that I had, because I had that. But I think it would probably be okay. This is not really a burger kind of, of thing. I think it's more of a uh, light meat uh, and, um, and uh, light pasta kind of, uh, kind of uh, wine. So I think it would, might might go okay with a spaghetti and meat uh, with um, with a marinara sauce. I, I wouldn't really go with. I don't know if I'd go with a meat sauce on it, but marinara sauce probably be okay with. Decent wine. It, it's good actually. And uh, anyway, uh, where was it going? Oh yes, the big game. And so we're we're talking about the big game and. Um, Everywhere, everyone's talking about the big game. But the one thing that you notice is that everybody's calling it the big game, right? Nobody's calling it by its official name, which by its official name is the... Okay. Now, why isn't any of everybody calling it the... Is it because everyone has become so paranoid that the NFL... The NFL, that's trademark too. The National Football League is um, has come down so hard on uh, companies that use the term um, in 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 marketing and things like that, and gone after them with cease and desist and lawsuits and whatnot uh, because of trademark violations or alleged trademark violations, I should say. That, that people have become very, very paranoid about that, so that even in places like the National Day Calendar, I'm looking at the National Day Calendar, and they're not calling it the... They're calling it the big game. They're, everybody's calling it the big game. And, um, and it's really starting to bug me. It's really starting to bug me. And this is my rant for the night. And I think it should bug everybody, uh, because I think this is where trademark and copyright... Uh, have uh, has has gone completely out of control. It's just completely out of control by large companies with lots of money that can throw their weight around, like the NFL, and um, and intimidate people to the point where people are afraid to even say things like. Duh, duh, duh. So, uh, and that's where we are. And, that, and that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. Now, if you go to, and I, I did a little checking up on this. I went to, I looked at some of the news items and saying, oh, everybody's calling it the game. Now, yeah, there are some obvious things. You know, this, the NFL um, has trademarked the name. <laughs> and uh, because of the, to protect their brand, that's their brand, right? And because of that, uh, whenever a big company that's not officially sanctioned by the Super Bowl, to, uh, the Super, oh, I've said it, oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure I am. Um, let it come, let them come at me. I don't have any money. Come on. <laughs> uh, so when when the um, so say like you know Lay's potato chips or something. Like that. Oh, oh, that's another trademark brand. Okay, so let's say a potato chip company or a beer company or a travel company or any other kind of company that comes up and tries to put the name of the the name of the big game, the actual name, the trademark name, in their product. Then the NFL has gone after them. Not just with cease and desist, but with lawsuits and all kinds of stuff saying you can't use our name because it is not endorsed by the NFL. Your product is not endorsed by the NFL, and you're trying to profit off of our trademark name. Okay, on the outside, on the outset, okay, I, I understand the logic here. I mean, as a trademark and copyright holder myself, <clears throat> 
I under, I fully understand that. I have issued cease and desist uh, notifications to companies before uh, that have um, outright stolen content that I owned, that I wrote. And uh, now it's a little bit different because the content that I wrote and I uh, that 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 uh, and and on be, not just myself, but on behalf of the company that I work for, uh, I, you know, I created it. And it belongs to, you know, the stuff that's mine is belongs to me. The stuff that I wrote for the company is, is, uh, is employed as, you know, being an employee of the company. It belongs to the company, belongs to the company. Um, that, that, you know, if somebody's outright stealing it and claiming it is theirs, that, that, that they claim copyright on, that's one thing. You know, like, okay, that's stealing content. You're stealing our content. You're stealing our our trademark or our, our copyright on something like that, that is theft. That is theft of, of, of content. That's theft of, of IP, uh, intellectual property. But if somebody is, um, if, if somebody's using the term, because it's a trademark name, so if somebody's referring to the name of the product because that's the name of the product, even though it's trademarked, and they're referring to it for a particular reason, a particular purpose, that's a little bit different. That's, that's a lot different, actually. And, you know, I, I looked this up. I, I checked with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which uh, I've, I've uh, gone to a number of times for various things because as podcasters, we had an issue with that. We had a, an ongoing, we had a couple of ongoing issues with that. One was, was um, uh, someone trying to... to um, uh, it, it, it basically, it was uh, someone trying to claim that they owned the the uh, patent for for podcasts, and then in another case, it was someone who uh, claimed that that they owned the name podcasting. Uh, so I'm I'm very familiar with the uh, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They've been a friend to us on that, and then they're just trying to be fair. And, you know, it's it's that's what it's about, but. Um, I went there to find out exactly what was going on with some of this. And um, in the case of the big game, okay, that there are uses and most uses of that used by regular people like like you and me and, and, and maybe for satire and for, for other for other purposes, that's that's considered um, it's considered fair use. And that's what you would consider fair use, because you're kind of having to to use it for a specific purpose, usually to actually identify the trademarked product or or, or item, and uh, what they call it. Uh, particularly, I was trying to look through their website here to to see specifically uh, how they termed it, but uh, it was. Uh, yeah, but, but essentially, what it is, it, it's it's fair use. Um, it's it's just like windows, you know. Like if somebody says, "I got to change my windows," I got to you know replace my windows in my house. That's one thing. But if you're referring to Microsoft Windows, Microsoft being a trademarked, a registered trademark, and Windows being a registered trademark when it comes to Microsoft Windows, or Apple, you know, when you're talking about Apple as a trademark name as opposed to holding up an Apple, you know, a couple of different things there. You're referring to a couple of different things. So when you're talking about uh, uh, trademarks and, and copyrights, uh, there is some leeway there. The, the problem is, is that the NFL has come down so hard on some of these companies about using their uh, trademark name, the Super Bowl, uh, which I accidentally already said our, uh, once, um, that it has people scared and the nfl is doing this they're they're intimidating people on purpose it's 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 it's, it is a form of bullying it's a form of harassment i'm not going to lie about that it's a form of bullying harassment because it's one thing if somebody is using your trademark to promote their product or associate your product with your trademark brand to sell more of their product because then you're using they're saying that well you endorse their product when you may you really don't and you and they're really you're really not getting any benefit from it you know any 
a monetary way from from them selling the product. And they're going to sell a lot more of the product because because people might think that oh this is associated with the rule. So they're going to uh, automatically expect that well they're going to sell more of it because well this is an official officially sanctioned item you know. <laughs> Uh, and it's not funny, really. But it's, it's not funny because a lot of these guys, you know, the NFL goes after these people. They're very relentless about it, and they're they're very. Um, I want to say that they're they're uh, uh, they're very. Uh, I don't I, <laughs> I don't want to get myself into trouble with the NFL, but they might come after me next. I don't know, and I don't have any money. So uh, the thing is that what what comes down to is and and Courtney says Courtney says these big corps are crazy. They some of them are some of them go way overboard because they overdo it. The RIAA is a prime example, and don't get me started on that because I don't have enough time to go through that. But um, when it comes to the big game. It's gotten to the point where the last few years, the NFL has gone after some of the, like, for instance, they went after one company. They, okay, they went after one company for, for putting their name on, on uh, or the name of the, the, the bowl on the product. And uh, they, uh, you know, basically uh, got into a lot of trouble in the legal uh, litigation with that for, for some reason. Uh, but... Uh, what happened a couple of years ago? I think there was a uh, there was a party. There was a uh, there was a just a party. It wasn't even an actually officially. It wasn't anything anybody was making money money off of. Apparently, it was a party, from what I understand. And the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl, I did it again. The NFL went after them because they were calling it, and I'm going to say it, they were calling it a Super Bowl party. I said it. They called it a Super Bowl party, and the NFL sent them to cease and desist letters. They sick their lawyers on them for calling it a Super Bowl party. Uh, because the NFL said, well, we're not officially sanctioning that as a Super Bowl party, so you can't call it that. And now when regular people are doing that, that's, that's I think that crosses a line. I really think that cl- crosses a line. Now I understand, once again, I understand what the, what the NFL is trying to do here, but they've way overdone it, way overdone it to the point where, they, and they're, they're trying to intimidate and scare some of these companies because they know that if they, they, they have that threat of intimidation, uh, it's going to keep other people from even trying it. Other people are not going to even go near it because they're they're so scared that the NFL is going to come after them next, right? Okay, but this is fair use. I can I'm going to sit here and I'm going to say Super Bowl and I'm going to say it again. And the reason is because this is commentary. Okay, I'm not using this to sell wine. I'm not using this to sell any product. I'm using this to as a commentary, as an editorial commentary. That's fair use, okay, to provide an opinion, an editorial commentary. So if the NFL comes after me, um, I can say that because, look, what is the purpose of even trademarking that, that name if you're, I almost said, uh, I could just call it the Stuper Bowl, right? Or I could call it the stupid ball if it gets stupid. Um, I think the NFL is stupid. I think they really are because they've overdone it. They've really overdone it. I was never a big fan of the NFL in the first place. I watch NFL games every once in a while. I'm not a huge football fan, but I, I watch the games. I think the NFL has really overdone it. And this is my personal opinion and my humble opinion. I think the NFL is being stupid. Okay. They, they've way overdone it with, with this, just scaring people to the point where even little people like, like me are afraid to say Super Bowl on a live stream or something like that because for fear of getting a cease and desist letter or getting sued or something. I think they've just w- gone way over the top. And this comes to the point of just it's trademark and, and, and copyright bullying is what it comes down to. I know this is my rant. And I'm not afraid to, to go over long on this one because uh, uh, it, it's it really bugs me. It really bugs me how how over 
we've just gone this whole copyright issue and I, I can go on and on about the copyright issue because I have my issues with that I am a copyright holder I respect copyrights I really do I respect the copyrights of others I, res I and, and I expect other people to respect my copyrights um, so I do understand that I fully understand it but there is a line that you draw as as far as as what is a a, a real offense that can really hurt you or, or, or your 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 ownership of that copyright or trademark and what just borders on the ridiculousness you know here's the thing if you're going to trademark a name what value does it have if nobody ever uses it that's the the question if you if you have a name and you trademark it and nobody ever says it because they're afraid to even mention the name what value does it have it has absolutely zero value now everybody's calling it the big game you know why because the nfl can't trademark the big game so what can happen is everybody will start calling it the big game nobody will ever call it the stupor the super bowl <laughs> and um and that trademark will have zero value to to the NFL at that point, right? So uh, that's my rant. And um, I'm just saying I think people are crazy. I think some companies and big corporations are crazy. I think the NFL is crazy. Um, uh, that's just my opinion. What are your opinions? What do you think about this? Uh, you're going to watch I'm going to still watch it. I'll still watch the big game but um i i have less much less respect for the nfl i never really respect the nfl that much to begin with but um i have much less respect for that organization now than i ever did especially from some of the other stuff they've done over the last few years but um i i i just it, it's just nuts it's just it's completely crazy anyway so that's my rant <laughs> done with that it's time to it's time to close up the stream pretty much. Um, I want to say to everyone if they're still watching if they haven't dozed off by now, I want to say thank you for watching me tonight. Um, yes, Courtney, I agree with you. These big corps are crazy. Some of them are. Some of them are. I understand where they're coming from, but some of them are just nuts. Uh, let's see anything else going on in Twitch. Um, I want to say thanks to everybody for watching me tonight. Once again, we were drinking. And let me see if I can pull this up this time with, uh, we, were, we were drinking this. This is the uh, Monte Tondo Valpolicello, Valpolicello is how it's pronounced. And um, I, for some reason, my, my camera stuff isn't working here very well. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, one of those, one of those nights. <laughs> Anyway, that's where we're drinking tonight, and uh, I want to thank you for joining me. That's the back end of it. <laughs> uh, i got to fix this. This has got to be fixed up. Uh, we'll get there. Anyway, so uh, that's where we're drinking. It's a pretty decent wine. This is a Valpolicello, 55% of a, um, and I have it right here, as a matter of fact, on this sheet. Now, now that's what I was working on. 55% Corvina. 30% uh, Rondinella and 15% Molinera. It's actually a pretty decent wine. I like it. It's it's actually a good wine. This is an Italian wine. It's 2017 is the vintage. And uh, it, it goes pretty well with, I would say, some, some mild meats, um, hard cheeses, I would say. Uh, it's, it's actually okay with the Gouda, the creamy Gouda from Trader Joe's. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, I'd stay away from spicier foods with this wine. I, I don't think this is really a wine for spicy foods. Uh, mild tannins. And, uh, and it's kind of a fruity bouquet, but not, yeah, it's kind of mild. It's okay. But it's, I like it. I like it. It's pretty good. And uh, One Archangel One has joined us. Hi, it's great to see you. Uh, and uh, One Archangel One says, I think pro sports are a distraction from what's going on in the world, things that really matter. Oh, boy, don't get me started. <laughs> No, I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I really do. I, I agree 100% uh, with that statement. And, um, you know, maybe in the next wine stream we'll go into that a little bit further after the big game. The super, what I call the Super Bowl. 
I don't think they've trademarked that one yet. But they, they have. I'm sure I'll get a cease and desist at some sort, at some point. Anyway, so um, I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight in the chat, for joining me on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. I hope you had a, a great time. I, I have. I always have a great time doing this, and this is why I do it, because um, I have fun. Look, when I stop having fun, when this stops being fun, I'm going to stop doing this. Okay? Right now I'm having fun, so it's going to keep on going. And uh, I want to thank everyone in the chat tonight. I want to thank uh, uh, Rob and Courtney and Tim and Phil who was in the chat, and I believe I saw Betsy in there earlier. Uh, I, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. And I want also want to thank on Twitch, I want to, to especially thank uh, Scruff TV, Arrow 30, 737. Uh, I want to put the three first. I don't know why. Arrow 737, One Archangel 1, uh, Jonathan O30 NL. Uh, appreciate your comment. <laughs> I'm not going to repeat it, but I appreciate it. Uh, this is a family show. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I want to thank you all for being with me uh, tonight on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Once again, uh, I want to ask everyone, please, uh, we're capping this tonight, and we're actually capping it with the, uh, I'm going to officially cap it with the, uh, the gift that I got from my good friends, uh, Tom and Nancy, then, over the holidays. That's my initial on it. I'm going to cap it with that tonight. And I want to uh, I want to ask everyone, please, that they don't drink and drive. Please do not drink and drive. Especially on game day or after game day, whatever. Please do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. We saw somebody text. I got a story about that, but it's gonna, I'm going to go over. I'll probably have to say that one for another time. But I saw a terrible thing of somebody looking at his cell phone, trying to parallel park in front of us. Uh, parallel park. He took him four tries to parallel park in front of us. Just we, we were about to pull out of the parking spot from the Sunset and Vine place, by the way. And uh, this guy with a huge SUV is trying to park parallel park in front of us in the one spot ahead. It took him four tries to get in there, and the whole time he is on his cell phone. He's missing every. He could have gotten it the first time. He did it right. He started to do it right the first time, but. He was talking on a cell phone while I was trying to parallel park. And it was a wonder if he didn't smack into us. But it, it was just, it, it was pathetic to watch. It really, it really was. Uh, I don't know. Please do not drink and drive. Do not text and drive. Because I want to see everybody come back here next week to join me on the Saturday Night Wine Stream. Safe and well, I want everyone to have a safe week and, and come back, join me on this wine stream next week. So we can all get together and drink with Rick. Good night.